Thanks, Ciarán Corla. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad of the opportunity to speak and contribute on this debate because there's very few movements in this country that can um, boast of 3 million members, 400 offices, 4,000 employees and up to 10,000 volunteers. And I think it is high time indeed that we had a fairly comprehensive debate in this House in relation to the future and the current state of the credit union movement. You see, Minister, the problem is this. When people look at the credit union movement and its network across the country, they're also minded of the fact that we've had a withdrawal by government of services right across this country. And you know the list. You have the Garda stations, you have the libraries, you have the public health centres, you have the post offices who have their own challenges, you have the small uh, schools, and you have all these been unravelled out of community and been warehoused into the big towns and the cities. So the credit union movement see this going on and they're worried. And what are they looking for and what are we articulating for on their behalf is a coherent policy. And that's what the movement are saying themselves. And I, I think it's, it's only right that we ask you as minister and representing the senior minister here today that you do produce and publish a white paper on the future of the credit union movement. And we'll contribute to that debate and to that process also, because in the absence of that, we have to have a roadmap for the credit union movement that comprises of so many people. In relation to Section 35, I get people coming into my clinics, no more than yourself or anybody else in this House, uh, week in, week out, who are trying to access finance and they can't get it anywhere else. But they can get it, and they could get it from the credit union, their local credit union, to build a small extension to their house, to even buy out their, their council house, something pretty small and modest. And, and you're not getting into the high end or the big end of the mortgage sector. And, and that's the restriction which has to be looked at. I think as well, in fairness, the credit union, have, the credit union movement have been um, stung by a spin that has been put out against them, that, that they had to be bailed out. Okay, we know about Newbridge, we know about Holt and Sutton, but in fairness, when Minister Noonan came in and said that it would cost anywhere between a half to one billion to bail out the credit union movement, and we now know that the true net cost was only 6.5 billion, you know, they're working then against that perception out there. That's something which I think there's an onus and responsibility on you to address. In relation to the um, pro prohibition or, or the limitation on new products, it's just simply not sustainable. Young people nowadays want to be able to access their credit union in a dynamic fashion with a debit card, their online, uh, available online products and all the modern uh, conveniences that a, a proper financial services uh, provider should be able to do. And the fact that no new products have been granted I, I think isn't uh, acceptable at all. Um, the other main um, item that we're looking for, which I want to mention and others have mentioned, um, um, others in addition, is the Personal Insolvency Act of 2012. We all know the big elephant in the room was the bank veto, right, and we've debated the bank veto in here on a number of occasions. But in relation to credit unions, the fact that the law is written and weighted in favour of bank loans, which then transfers those losses onto the credit union movement, is something that we, that we really need to have a, a serious uh, look at in this country and have a proper analysis of the impact and how that's affecting the, um, the credit union movement. Now, I was listening, before I came in here tonight, I was listening to the debate, and a lot has been said about the credit union ethos, and rightly so, and about the credit union core values. But I also think we need to you know, have a, a, a fairly frank discussion about the mindset of government. And when I was preparing for this debate, I couldn't get my head around one thing which was troubling me, and it's the attitude of the government. Now, whether it's real or perceived, but it's the attitude of the government towards the credit union movement. And it struck me that the only possible explanation is that the people driving the agenda, you know, is it yourself or the senior minister or the civil service, you know, do you understand what the credit union movement is all about? And I'm not trying to be decisive about it, but I'm just asking the question. Because how could anyone who has had the experience of relying on a credit union, for example, to purchase school uniforms, to bring their children on their first holiday, to buy a washing machine, you know, how could they possibly stand over what has been happening to the credit union movement all along? So whether it's government, whether it's the senior civil service, whether it's the regulators, there needs to be a mindset change in government in relation to the credit union movement. And in the short space of time that's available to me, I just want to mention there's a you. number of credit unions in Limerick, in the Limerick area, 
who have suffered big Sorry. losses Your as a result of investments place. in the IBRC. And we've had a lot of debate in this House in relation to the IBRC and site serve and loan write downs. Now, you have it within your Sorry, discretion Deputy. within the legislation to wind up the IBRC, and I really think that the credit unions in Limerick who are suffering these um, write downs on their investments, one of them is my own local credit union, the MPCC. So you're Mumford taking Patrick time from well, Deputy McGrath to please please your seat. Thank I think you. they deserve a bit of fair play from government, and there should be intervention to have their investments paid up and honoured by government Sorry, as, part, as part of the liquidation De process.